true command, control, and comfort over the kit actually come from something a little deeper than just four-way coordination. Today, I'll show you exactly what this is. If you're having a hard time feeling right behind the kit, you're just not comfortable, you don't have power and intention behind the things that you play, you struggle to convey the musical ideas that you hear, then this lesson is for you. I will teach you a simple exercise that might not be easy, but that will reap dividends for your true deep four-way coordination. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that others want to play with and listen to and have in their bands. And we do this by teaching you the core drumming skills that really matter, that really get you results much more quickly. And hey, if you are a beginner drummer hanging out today, I've got a special gift for you that's also gonna help you out with today's lesson. If you're just like, Steven, I, don't, I have no coordination. I'm a total, total beginner here. I'm just trying to get up and running playing songs, but I'm having a hard time playing songs because there are these different grooves happening and I'm trying to figure out what they are and I don't know how to play any fills. Hey, I've got you covered. I've got a total cheat sheet here for you that's gonna help you out and just really get you up and running quick. This is my 30 days to four way rock coordination for the beginner drummer guide. This is going to help teach you some grooves and get that coordination going. Each one of these, you're, you're learning a new groove every day. Each one builds off the last and you're building four-way independence step by step. And eventually you're able to play more syncopated patterns that are leading you to be able to improvise. You're also working in automatic autopilot left foot timekeeping in these. And this is all happening over the course of 30 different lessons. Whether or not you can do this in 30 days, that's not the point. The point is that you've got a step-by-step -step system here that's gonna build your coordination, especially if you're a total beginner. This is gonna be really helpful to you. And you can use this alongside today's lesson. So go grab that in the description, totally free. All right, on with today's lesson. Here's my big goal for you today. I want you to go from a lack of feeling at home and in control over the kit while you play to feeling musical and confident and having command over the drums at all time while playing. Just imagine that, actually feeling like you have complete control. You feel at home, you feel relaxed and in command of your drum set, especially while playing songs, while on a gig. That's the icing on the cake. That's what I want you to get to, and you can do it. I'm gonna show you exactly how today. So there was a, a moment, there was, this, there, there was a specific moment on a gig one time years ago. I think this was the day that I felt like I suddenly gained command over the kit. It was a really interesting moment. I'll explain a little of, of how this felt, and I, I believe that you can experience this too. I'm gonna help you get there, and this exercise we're getting into today is really gonna go a long way toward getting you there. I remember playing, I was playing with a cover band that uh, I played with for years. We still play every once in a while. And we were playing at this venue. I remember who I was playing with, where I was playing. And we're in the middle of playing a song. It was pretty simple. Uh, it was not a complicated drum beat I was playing. It may have just been a money beat. But I remember grooving along and it just suddenly hit me. This feels really good. I feel comfortable with what I'm playing. I feel confident in what I'm playing. This sounds good, I'm listening to everything happening. I'm aware of what I'm doing on the kick, what I'm doing on the snare, the hi-hat. I'm aware of what the bass player is doing. I'm looking at his hand, we're jamming with each other. I'm aware of what the singer's singing. It was this moment of realizing I hear everything that's going on and I'm in control of this musical situation. I know what I'm playing and what I'm going to play next. And it was this really cool feeling where it was like, you know, maybe I've just now finally reached like a certain level of mastery on the drums where I'm no longer scrambling to think, well, oh, what fill am I gonna go into next? Or, oh no, what if I've slowed down or I've sped up? Oh no, what if I don't sound good? No, I knew all of those things. I'd been playing enough up to this point that I, I felt like I, I understood my instrument. I was becoming more one with my instrument and more at home with it. And I think a lot of things led up to this certain moment. But I wanna share with you the, the biggest one today. Do this exercise that <laughs> nobody wants to do. It's not easy. This is a challenging exercise. It will push you. It'll really push you. Do this exercise I'm going to teach you today, and it really will quickly propel you toward this level of command and just confidence over your instrument, I promise you. Okay, I have a question for you, and this might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. I know it's always made me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but think about this. So we might be able to play grooves with all four limbs. It's not that difficult to be able to play a basic groove that where you've got something going with all four limbs, maybe simple timekeeping with the left foot. But if you're asked to independently control your dynamics, so let's say you're playing that basic groove and somebody says, all right, 
get louder with the right hand without changing anything else or get softer with the left hand without changing anything else. That's really hard. And if you can't do that, then do you really have four-way coordination? And that's what, that's what kind of makes us feel uncomfortable here because all the coordination talk is generally about, well, let's play this rhythm here and this rhythm here so that I can you know, you know, play polyrhythms on the drum set, a four over three between the hands. And that's true and those are great things and that's where coordination starts. That's the first thing, that's, that's why I told you about that guide. That guide will get you playing basic groove so the focus is on playing this part with this hand, this part with this hand, that's how you start. But eventually you have to start moving beyond that if you want to actually have full control and command over the drums. So when playing something super basic, can you independently change volumes of one limb at a time without it completely affecting all the others? If not, I have to ask that question and I want you to think about it, do you really have four-way coordination? Because this kind of extends our definition of what four-way coordination is. Yes, it's playing different rhythms, creating different sounds with each limb, but it's also being able to hit things differently at a completely different volume and that not affect everything else. So being able to listen to one thing at a time, and that's what we're moving toward today. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice the dynamic independence exercise. Here how, here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna break this down for you, nice and simple. It, it really is easier to play different rhythms with different hands than it is to play different dynamics, because even a total beginner, I could say, all right, I want you to play this on your right leg, and then play half of that rate on your left leg, so we could think of this as eighth notes on the right leg, quarter notes on the left leg. That's not difficult, but as soon as we say, okay, be a lot louder with the right hand than the left, suddenly it gets weird. And then if we say switch that back and forth, without stopping, then it's another story. And so that's what we've got to target here. That's where we've got to get really specific. So, what I want you to do first, even if you're not sitting at your drum set, that's totally fine. If you are sitting at your drum set, set your sticks down. We're just gonna talk through this. We're gonna play with our hands on our legs right now. What we wanna do is start really simple, just tapping our hands here and thinking through, okay, can we do these different dynamics, different loudnesses between our hands first? And then we'll worry about applying it to the kit. So the first one, we just wanna play eighth notes. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much what the tempo is. We'll say about right here. One and two and three, here's our tempo. So I want you to get going, just tapping eighth notes on your legs. Now gradually get louder with the right hand without getting louder with the left. And as you're doing this, what you'll find is generally whichever limb is getting louder, that's the one that your ear is now gonna gravitate toward. So that's a way you can think about this. So listen to that right hand. We're listening to the right hand. Now left hand is still going, but it's kind of just autopilot, it's doing its thing. We're letting it become autopilot. That way we can focus our, our energy on the right hand instead. That's where our ear is. Now, get soft again, and now louder left hand. So now we're shifting over to, okay, now we're thinking about the left hand. Now we gotta think a little bit about the right hand and make sure it doesn't follow. And then once you can do this, practice switching back and forth between them, like phasing in and out. And just being fully aware of how loud each one is and listening carefully to each one. And of course, you can get really intricate with this in different volumes and say, I'm gonna be medium here, loud here, soft here, really soft here. You can get crazy with this, but that's the fundamental basic to start with. Make sure you can do that there along with me before you move on to the next one. Okay, so now for our next step, we're, we're still tapping our eighth notes here on our, on our legs. We're gonna add in quarter notes with our right foot, just tapping down here. I'm tapping on the heel plate of my pedal. So this could be any floor, wherever you're sitting, as long as you can at least hear something. So when you come in, try to have all of them at the same volume, which is pretty quiet. Let's have everything quiet. And now gradually get louder with that right foot without your hands getting louder. It's, it's tricky because your hands want to get louder too and you hear that getting louder, you want your hands to get louder. Don't let them, keep the hands really soft. So you're, you're stomping that right foot nice and loud while keeping the hands chill. And now we're gonna go the other direction, the vice versa, the reverse of this. Right foot is now soft, and hands are gonna get loud. I think this one's weird because I've trained myself to be louder on the kick than with my hands a lot of times. It's really weird to just barely tap the right foot and play loud with the hands, so this might be the one you wanna target. So that's that second step. Third step, let's add in the left foot too, also playing quarter notes, so our feet are both playing the same thing. Just one, two, three, four. We've got our eighth notes going on right here. Now. See if you can get loud with the left foot 
without getting louder with the right foot, this has got to be the hardest one because it's very easy for right foot to follow left foot. So if you need to target just the feet, okay, just do that. We're just playing slow quarter notes. Practice barely tapping your right foot while really stomping your left foot. And then the other way around. Loud right foot, very soft left foot. Now what also adds a layer of challenge to this is when we apply it to the kit, which we'll do in a minute. Because the technique and what our feet are actually doing to change the dynamics on a kick drum pedal are entirely different from on a hi-hat stand. And so that, that adds a layer of challenge versus when we're just sitting here tapping. But then once you can do that, just feet. Okay, let's add the eighth notes back, add, add the eighth notes back in. Soft eighth notes, our feet are starting off soft, but let's get louder on the hi-hat. And now softer on the hi-hat. And now let's get loud with everything, but then get softer with the hi-hat. So the interesting thing there is that whichever limb is doing something different from all the others, that's the one you have to focus your ear on. So maybe if everything's soft and one gets louder, you've got to focus on that one. Or if everything's loud and one gets softer, focus on that one. So those are the two different ways we can practice this. So that's pretty much it. Now we're going to apply this to the kit. We're going to do this on the drum set. That way we can really hear our dynamics too and it'll really see how honest we actually are and how well we're actually doing. So we're going to do this with the metronome at 90 beats a minute. I'll click us off. Feel free to play along. I'll tell you specifically what I'm doing before each one. But we're going to start off with just the hands. So just like what we just did, tapping our feet, tapping our legs, we're going to do the same thing on the kit. We're going to do just snare and floor tom. We're gonna get louder on the floor tom and then softer, louder on the snare and then softer, and then we'll add in the kick, add in the left foot, and then we'll play a groove and it'll get even more interesting. So here we go. And now we're going to add in the kick drum. So I know it's kind of difficult to follow along with me there as I'm not talking through it. And that's why we talked through it here doing hands on the legs because it's hard to say what rate I'm going to do these changes. But you can hear the things I'm doing and then getting louder here with the hands while getting softer here. So you can try playing along if you want to, but this is also an exercise you just have to do on your own listening to you, not to me. That way you can really pay attention to your dynamics. So now we're going to add in the left foot also doing quarter notes. We'll start off everything soft and then get louder with the left foot. And then get softer, we'll also bring up the volumes of everything else and then try to get soft here too. So that'll definitely be a challenge. So now what we want to do is just play a groove. We're going to assemble a basic money beat with some left foot timekeeping, and then we're going to practice changing dynamics while playing a groove. That way we're kind of applying things a little bit more musically because something, the, the mark of a great 
sounding drummer is a drummer who has the ability to control dynamics when playing a groove. Generally, when we're playing rock, we need our drums to be loud, cymbals to be soft. If we're playing jazz, we need our cymbals to be strong, drums to be soft. So we've got to have that dynamic control to really make a song or a style feel the way it needs to and allow our kit to be mixed well so that what the mics pick up actually sounds good and there's not too much cymbal or too much snare. We want to make sure levels are where they need to be because we're in charge of how we sound. Yeah, the sound guy can help us out, but hey, if there's no sound guy, we're entirely in charge of how we sound in a room. And so we've got to be acutely aware of our dynamics. That's why this is a big deal. So let's play a groove. We're going to just groove along at 80 beats a minute and do some dynamic changes. And of course, on top of all that, you can practice everything all together, dynamic changes, gradually getting louder, everything, gradually getting softer, everything. And then in addition to that, you can practice sort of the vice versa of this that I showed you when we were just doing the exercise here, not really in groove form, of make everything loud and gradually get softer with one thing, bring it back up. And then gradually get softer with another thing, bring it back up. And so there are those two ways you can do this exercise where your bass level volume is soft, practice getting louder and then softer with one thing at a time or bass level volume is loud, practice getting softer with one thing at a time and going like that. Either way, they're both very unique challenges and I think it's easier to start with everything soft and practice going up and then back down with one thing at a time. The biggest tip I can give you and the most important just thing to think about, mindset to be in as you practice this, is repeat this over and over again. Be in that mindset of I'm gonna repeat this, I'm gonna use repetition and I'm gonna listen. You have to be listening to each limb, and that's why we do this over and over again, because the more you play something over and over, the more your ear is grabbing onto stuff. And what you find is that as you're doing these dynamic changes, you're listening. You're, you're listening specifically to the, the limb that is changing, but you're also listening to the others, and you're thinking, okay, did that get louder? Okay, let's try to keep that the same. So you're practicing keeping everything under control, and your ear is what is leading all of this. This is fantastic ear training. This is not just caveman hammering out rhythms. This is our ear is leading the coordination. And so we could argue that this is like the fifth dimension of coordination, where we've got four-way coordination, but then we've got this fifth layer that comes in of listening, of our ear. We're training our ear to listen to specific things, and then we're controlling what our ear hears, or we're adjusting based on what our ear hears. That's a better way to say it. We're making adjustments based on the feedback our ear is getting. So it's so much that our brains are doing here, and so this is a much deeper level of coordination than you get when you're just hammering out rhythms, not worrying about what they sound like. We're applying this fifth dimension sort of layer there that makes this so much more challenging. Really, I guess we should call this the fourth dimension, but <laughs> since we've got four-way coordination, we're just calling this the fifth thing. Fifth thing to be thinking about, and it's definitely a challenge, but hey, if you can make yourself do this, make yourself practice this, start with just playing on your legs, tapping your feet, that is a great thing to do away from the kit that's gonna help your coordination, and then apply it to the kit, apply it to grooves, think about it while you're playing songs, when you're on a gig, Think, how does this ride cymbal sound in this room? Do I need to be softer on it? Are my hi-hat chicks too loud right now in this room? Do I need to be softer? If you want to sound awesome and you want to sound like a pro, this is how you do it. This is how you gain the command and the control over your kit that allows you to be free and musical and improvise because you have that total control over every limb. And that's what I want for you. And you can absolutely do this. You just got to be patient. Be patient and know that that moment when you're playing where you suddenly feel the command, you feel the confidence and the musicality, it will come. Just wait for it. Practice with repetition. Practice actively listening and listening and listening. So 
Question for you, where do you need to start? Maybe you need to start just doing this. Maybe you're ready to apply it to the kit. Maybe you just need to dive into this exercise, work on the dynamic independence. Or maybe you're a beginner and you're like, yeah, this is a little above where I'm at, Steven. Let me start with something even simpler. That's why I'm giving you this guide, 30 days to four-way rock coordination for the beginner drummer. Maybe that's where you need to start. That way you can just get a little bit of basic independence going on that really does lead to all four limbs operating. And then you can apply what you've learned today in this lesson to everything in that guide and really exponentially increase your coordination. So maybe that's where you need to start. Maybe you just need to download the guide, dive into that, print it off, whatever you want to do, take it to your practice room and start working through those grooves. Even if you don't know how to read notation, you'll catch on quickly because you can listen to the recordings. And so you can definitely get going with these and really make some quick progress. And so start with that if you need to, and then start doing some dynamic independence. Practice the stuff that people don't want to practice. That is why they are average, but you are not going to be average. You're going to practice the hard stuff and you're going to not be scared of a challenge and you're going to grow like crazy and thank yourself later. You can do this. All right. Hope this lesson has been valuable. I hope this has been a lot of fun for you. It's been a lot of fun for me. I will see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous.